followers, fans, and knowledge hunters, welcome to another episode of Tutor Bros. I'm here with my friend Christian Kriedelslavs from Europe, which we'll soon be presenting. My name is Matt Mac McCringle, and uh, I'm uh, one of the longtime contributors to Tutor Bros. And it's a pleasure to have you here, Christian from Europe. So uh, say hi to the followers, Christian. Pleasure to, to be here as well, Matt. Feels really good. And today we're actually going to be, be making some, some pretty exciting stuff. So I'm really happy to be here. Well, today we're going to be looking at uh, one of the most requested uh, things that we've had from our followers, and that is logo animation. I'm sure this is something you've been doing a lot in your uh, time as uh, <laughs> Adobe After Effects professional. So this yes. will be a good episode, I think. Yes. And the exciting thing about logo animations is, of course, that they can be done in such such a multitude of ways, really. So really exciting really? To, to bring some of my expertise to the table. And of course, as always, an honor to be working with you and of course to the bros, Matt. For sure, for sure. And, and uh, also I want to give a big uh, heads up to our followers to check out your your channel because you come from another channel called uh, the the Gear Dudes, which has uh, been growing some uh, big following in the last couple of years, <laughs> yes, I believe. Yes, thank you, Matt. Yes. Gear dudes, so check out Gear Dudes. Gear Dudes and also GearDudes.com for some extra yep. content. I also have some tutorials on VFX up there, so check that out! For sure, and uh, as I said in the beginning of this video, my name is Matt, Matt McCringle, Matt's also called Matt, and uh, be sure to check out my channel, uh, Matt Tech. So that's M-A-T-T-T-T-E-C, so Matt Tech. I'm a lo long, t long time fan over here, Matt. Long time fan. I know, and I'm uh, thankful for that. And uh, uh, I'm a big fan of yours for sure. I Thank mean, you. Dudes is a great channel on YouTube, but also I think you're on Instagram. Uh, that's the uh, last time I checked. So, uh, anyway, this time around, we're going to look at some logo animation. So, let's dive right into it. Let's dive right in. So we're back from uh, the diving and now we are uh, beginning this tutorial and of course the first thing we're doing here, this is something that is a common step for a long time Adobe users, is uh, you're starting up the Adobe After Effects software. And uh, we're going to go ahead and double click the icon if you have it on your desktop, you might have it if you're running a PC, you might have it on your start menu. And if you're running a Macintosh with a OS X, you might have it in your little uh, drop menu, which is usually located at the bottom, sometimes to the left or to the right, depending on what type of settings you have, which you prefer. And I am I would say that I'm not judging either of these settings. I'm just, uh, as long as you have the icon uh, at a position that's, you know, fast, accessible to you, that's, I mean, good for you. Yes, though. I mean, the, the, the important things here are to, 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 to do it your way, you know? Because that's right. Working in VFX, working in animation and in video industry, it's always good to be comfortable. So wherever you keep your icons, I mean, let's go back here again. I actually keep my icon right here on the desktop. I will also say uh, before we dive into it that I have 2019 as well. So yeah. Matt, I don't know if you're familiar with the versions, but actually 2019 is what was called 16 before. So yeah. And, and That's actually a good, good thing to mention now. Yes, because we are using 17, version 17 now. And to be fair, I mean, we're going to actually open up Creative Cloud. So this is Adobe's... Yes. This is something that's good for, for all users, both uh, new newly found uh, Adobe users and long-time users such as myself and you, Christian, that uh, there are di there are actually some, some proficient... Uh, um, I should say difference between the, the different versions yes. that can affect how you look upon this tutorial. And um, Definitely. I, would say that, I, I will say that most of the things we're going to cover today will be sort of common ground for, I would say, Adobe After Effects users from version 15 up until the, the 2020 version that we're seeing out there today. Yeah. So or, I think we'll be version quite 17 clear. as we would. Uh, I, I think today for this sake of this tutorial, we're going to call it After Effects 2020 to keep it simple. But to sure. be fair, I'm using 17.1.3 version and yep. the latest version of the 16, which is the last version of the 16, is actually 1.3. So this is good to have in mind. Sure. 
Uh, it's funny, actually, the same uh, version number. So that's that's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Uh, yeah, it's, I, 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 it makes you wonder if it's a coincidence or if there's something they they have worked. Uh, I mean, this could be something that development team has been working inside of their for sure. version. Uh, I mean, yeah. we, we love we love the Adobe team. They're they're doing great stuff. So uh, so uh, shout shout out to the Adobe team. Yeah, shout out to them. They they're really the the top of the mountain when it comes to. Uh, to uh, I mean programming uh, of course and um, so th so diversion history is uh, another segment of knowledge that we'll really like, like to cover some of the time. Yeah, but, we'll, we'll do that but, in uh, another video for sure. Sure. Matt. So let, let's get back to uh, the yeah, Adobe After let's Effects. Let's open up uh, Adobe After Effects. As we said, it this is the version 2019 version. So uh, keep that in mind, everyone that's watching, and we'll uh, dive right into it. The first thing we're doing, of course, uh, Christian here, is we're gonna take a look at the new composition because this this is the first thing you're doing every time you you're starting a new product. Uh, if I'm not um, misinformed, right? Yeah, that's correct. So you have two options from the beginning. You can either yep. press this, the new composition button, which is that that, that is the classic one. Let's yeah, be, that's let's what be everyone that. uses, you know. Uh, but uh, you also have the option of new composition from footage, which is actually kind of a under misunderstood function of After Effects. Sure. You could actually use this. If I just click this, you actually there have you the options to to choose some footage to start from. So this means actually to to be honest, this means uh, literally that you can you can start a new composition with that it takes the settings from some footage that you found on your computer and it will actually uh, sort of identify the, the kind of footage that you're selecting and from that information create a new composition with those specifics in mind. So that's actually a very good way of starting a new composition. That's correct. And it's a good way to get a running start on a project. You know, if you're sure. you are fighting time, you have angry clients, you know, they're hunting you. Yeah, I ah, know what ah. you mean. This is a good they're way to get started, but today we're actually going to use the new composition button. So let me go ahead and actually click this. Yep. So we're clicking up the new composition, and, and this is a good way. This is a good time to to stop and uh, take a breathing here and, and take two steps back because we're looking at a window that's been, it's 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 not been looking the same for 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 uh, forever. You know, it's it's gone through quite a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. So the composition settings window is a window that's been overlooked uh, far too many times, and and today we're not going to do that. So I know I know that lots of people just sort of skip through this, they click OK, they go on mm -hmm. do the project, yes, and then they, yes. you know, yes. down the line what happens, well, they, they end up, you know, uh, changing their mind and, and you know, uh, wishing that they would have used, selected the, the, the correct settings from the beginning. And so, yes. so let's not, you know, let's not repeat those mistakes again. Let's take a look at the preset uh, menu from, from uh, to begin with here, so, so we get that correct, because we're doing a logo animation, let's not forget that. So what, what are we looking at here, Christian? Well, what we're looking here is all your preset options. So these are presets that the Adobe team themselves have created and put in for us to, you know, get something fast and to get some settings done quick. So, in other words, those are relevant options that we should not overlook. These are actually options that you should be comfortable with and that you should, should have a lot of knowledge about absolutely, before Matt. moving on with your project. Absolutely. Yeah? And also the hours the team put into this is something you have to respect and shout out sure. to the Adobe team for making these presets. Always. So, I mean, the settings you want to look at, if, if, if we're going to go into detail here, the settings that are important are, of course, the HDTV settings. These yeah. are the we're, most We're not doing formats. any other than HTV. Nowadays, HTV is a thing we're doing. It's the standard in yes. the industry, I would say, without being Without without desegregating, uh, uh, I think the HDTV is is the industry standard right now. So we're doing that for sure. And you're looking at 24, or 25. How how should one think before selecting 24 or 25? And this is to be also specify. This is 24 frames per second. Yes. Uh, so we're not we're not leaving that information out to anyone. Well, Matt, the problem here is if I'm just gonna click 24 here, let me yeah, show. What's you. the problem here, let, Christian? Let me show you. So. Yeah, what happens? Well, Matt, I think the problem here is probably that the film industry today, as we all know, actually is 23.976. This is the frame per second that's mainly used in Hollywood movies, in popular sure. cinema movies, uh, in many German movies, actually. Yes. And 
uh, almost all the American movies uses the 23.976 format. So a lot of people would say that that it's why such a weird numbering, why the why the decimals, yeah. and and without going into that uh, more depthly, I would say that it's just something that's been a standard for uh, such an amount of time that people can't really remember why that happened, but. Here we are. It's twenty three point point nine seven six. It's something that we have to accept, and it's, as you say, this is something that uh, a lot of the big movies use. So, if you're doing a log animation for a big company, uh, I, I wouldn't say it doesn't hurt to choose this standard for frame rate. No, but, the, but the, I, I will say the problem here is if you now notice, if we go out to preset, it says custom. Yeah, well, so so that thing just changed back to custom because you went in a dabble with the frame rate. Let, let me show you here. If I go back to 24, we now, we're back again. Yeah, we have the HDTV 1080 24 preset. And if I go to 25, I will show you here. We now have the HDTV 1080 25 format. 25. And yes. let me now go back to the most popular format. 23.976 So why is this? This must be confusing for so many, many, uh, I mean, designers and, and animators out there. Why can't we do an industry standard HDTV project in 23.976 frame rate? Why is this a problem? Well, I think the problem here is, is uh, again, I love the Adobe team. I think they're doing great stuff. They might basically my heroes my biggest heroes in life yes so, but so i think big shout this out might to those guys. be big shout out but i think this might be an overlooked feature actually so uh, adobe and and thomas thomas at adobe at uh, the german section if you hear me this this needs a fix definitely we see a lot of confused young people asking about this why is there no preset so but i will show you a, a super quick tip on how to to fix this so you see this little button here Yep, I see it. This is actually where you can create your own preset. So, I would say that button has been overlooked by so many users for so long mm -hmm. because it's 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 as if why should I create my own preset? Isn't that something that takes extra time? Well, sure, it takes a couple of minutes, sometimes a couple of hours. I I've been sitting at the preset button and doing my own presets for days. But have I won that time back? Sure, I have. So this is actually something that I hope uh, people will take uh, to their own projects. Uh, create your own priestess, people. Absolutely. It's good for your projects, it's good for your work line, for your work timeline, it's good for your clients also in the long running. Um, might not be good in the short run. Yeah. So I will I will name this preset HDTV TV. space 1080. The, ten, 1080, I, I could have guessed. Which is the resolution. And then we're gonna punch in these numbers. So, 23, comma, Come out. Nine or dot, seven, as we say in the US. Nine seven. Six. Six. So. So there's your preset. There we are. And then, of course, you hit the OK button, and yeah, there we are. Or you could you could also press the Enter button on your keyboard if you yes. have Enter key. So look at that. I mean, this is fantastic. This is why I love Adobe After Effects so much, and uh, actually, I love the I love the whole Adobe series, uh, the Creative Studio. It is an amazing piece of software bundle because look at what you just did. You created a, a, an amazing preset that enables you to every time you start up this this amazing piece of software, you get your own preset without having to change anything. You have the HDTV. One, uh, 1080 with uh, 23.976 it's just in there it's it's you, you punch it in it's right there it's in the box you can just you know, i mean next time you 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 fire up the software you can just go on and press ok and you're already up and running so <laughs> i mean it's, it's, it's an amazing piece of tip it's amazing matt it really is and i will say the only issue is we do not get the hdtv in the order that we that we necessarily would have wanted sure. from this move but we have it, it's usable, we will select it. So It's not alphabetical, and this is going to be the last shout out to the Adobe team, which I, by the way, I really love those guys, but please, please make it so that we can arrange the presets, including the user-generated presets, yes. in alphabetical order, because I would really like to see the HDTV presets up in there with the other HDTV yeah. presets. So I do not like having to scroll all the way down to the bottom just to find my preset. It's, 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 in, it's in a hierarchy that I do not really appreciate, but as I said, no offense to the Adobe team at all. I just think they are amazing. So, but, uh, so uh, we're about to uh, create our uh, composition settings, so let's dive right into it.
And so we are back at the composition settings and we are about to create our composition in Adobe After Effects 2020. So I think we are about uh, ready with the composition settings. Well, uh, we uh, there, there are a few details here that are important as well to, to remember. So the composition name, remember, always yeah. name this your compositions. This could be confusing. Always name your compositions because you do not want to end up with a big project having comp 1, comp 2, comp 3, pre-comp 3, pre-comp 1, comp 3, comp 5, comp 6, pre-comp 1, etc. It will get confusing for you, Matt, so... so sure, so I mean, I'm already confused with just hearing that the things you said there was confusing <laughs> to me. And this, Christian, is why I li like to do to choose with you, because you always bring out the things that I a lot of people would tend to forget, so... Thank you, Thank Matt. you also oh, for enlightening... As all. This, is a, this is a good example of <laughs> what often goes wrong. So, we're gonna name this, Matt. We're gonna name this Tutor Bros. That's us, of course. So, uh, good oh, starters. Bros, a little mistake there. A little typo okay. there. A little typo. Uh, we're gonna call this, sorry, Logo Animation. And we're gonna actually put our names here. So, Oh, sorry, Matt. Matt, Christian. We're gonna exactly. call this. I'm Matt. And you're Christian. Version one, because you never know. Okay. This is this is correct. I mean, a lot of people will probably say that. Why so? What's such a long composition name? But hey, uh, you have to name your compositions and your files in a manner that allows you to later on find them. You might be looking for this project uh, in a year, two years, why not 10 years ahead? And by then you're searching your Mac or your PC and you're searching for, hey, what did I do that, uh, that time? Did I do something with a logo animation? Yes, yeah, sure. So you type in your logo animation on your <laughs> on your search yes. engine and you find tens of thousands of projects called something with a logo animation. But, but So this is very important. You should name your projects accordingly to exactly what they contain. So this is a Tudor Bros logo animation with Matt and Christian version 1. An excellent uh, kind of uh, composition name. So uh, yes. so we have the name, we have the preset, we have the width and height, and we have uh, gone through the frame rate. And now for, for maybe one of the most important aspects of the composition settings is the resolution. So what do we do here? We have full resolution selected right now. Well, Matt, uh, I, I will say, since this is a quick tutorial, we will be using the full resolution. And I will be making a video on each of these resolutions. Uh, that's gonna be on Gear Dudes, so so check that out. Yeah. Uh, I would love if you join me on those videos, Matt, and uh, we could go through them. Uh, but I'm always here for you. When it comes to Adobe, you can always count on me. So <laughs> uh, we will link to 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 the Gear Dudes Matt. videos later on. So uh, for those who are watching this, be sure to stay tuned to this channel within a couple of months, and you will see some some full depth videos about the resolution menu here in the composition settings. So, uh, but let's move on to the time code and uh, duration. Yeah, so and, uh, time code is basically, you know, this is the starting point of your video. Yeah. And, uh, and usually that's a zero, right? Because you want to begin at the beginning. That's a lot of zeros, Matt. Yeah, well, that, that's it's a couple of them. I, I see less, uh, <laughs> at least seven of them there. So sorry, it's a little yoke. I, I, I'm uh, yeah. The, the the starting point is zero. That's correct, Matt. Sorry about sure. that. But but a lot of people would uh, wonder. I mean, is the zero always a good starting point? And uh, I, I don't think that's a valid question at all. I would say that uh, don't don't even ask those kinds of questions no. because you don't you this, don't this you don't want to open up that box with me, Matt. No, that that's a Pandora <laughs> Trust, box you don't want to see me. open. There are for cases. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So oh. we're, we're gonna leave that out for today, and we're gonna say that the start time code it, it's a good it's a good idea. I would say to start the time code at zero 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 double. Yes. So that's a good start, Mingo. And then the, we have the duration here. So so uh, we're doing a logo animation today and so so how long uh, would you say that the logo animation should be per per se i'm gonna say that the logo animation we're gonna be doing today is gonna be just about 15 seconds but i yeah. will say if you're gonna do 15 seconds i think it's probably smart to double it you know i usually double yeah. it so i'm gonna punch I in and these let, let me be clear what we're punching in here is not the seconds this is actually the frame right. frame number of the second sure and since we have chosen 23.976 as our frame rate this is gonna be the max value of this of this box here to the right sure 
So, so it's a, it's a good thing to to let people know there that this might be something that even the advanced users have overseen in the yes. in years is that this is not it's not seconds or milliseconds or divided seconds we're looking at this is actually frames we're looking at frames yes so so what we're looking at now is 12 seconds and 18 frames that's the length of our uh, composition right now that's correct Matt and I'm gonna actually punch in zero zero here so that is 12 seconds that's correct so we said 15 seconds so we're gonna actually double that and let me bring up my calculator and but while you do that i can say that um uh, as christian said here if you're looking at doing a logo animation that's 15 seconds long just Try to remember that most of the cases, or I would say in many cases, you will find yourself out of space in the composition, meaning that you will have to uh, get into the modif the modified settings of the composition later on and change the settings into a bigger number. So uh, not having to do that is a good thing. So be sure to have a little margin in your uh, length, the duration of the composition settings, and you'll be fine later on. That's correct, Matt. So I've calculated that it's actually, as you can see, it's 30 seconds we're gonna be needing. So so that is 15 seconds times two. Uh, it's it's actually, it's well, uh, in in a way, it's the, it's the double of the original time that we intended yes, for. Yes, that's 30. correct. So 30, and let's not dwell on that. Let's dive right in. We are now in our composition that we just created. This is the result of the uh, the box that we uh, were dabbling with uh, just before. And uh, the the composition modifier dialog box. The way to explain this is that all of the things that we specified in the in the modifier box for the composition settings has now been compiled, and those settings now generated a sort of composition that we're now looking at and this this might be uh, christian this is the end result of all that work that we put into the modify uh, settings <laughs> box so yes. this here is now the composition that's correct matt and uh, le let me also say that there's gonna be a more in-depth tutorial on the composition create menu so we're gonna go through well not only the resolutions but you know a lot of the settings there to see what you can customize before you actually get to work before you actually because you know, it's good to get all the things in place before you actually start working on your project. So you don't have to go back. It's a complicated route going back, changing resolution, changing the frames per second. So yeah. please, please, please take your time and do it right from the beginning. Yeah, as we say on Tudor Bros, get your workflow in order. Get your settings in order. Yes. We have workflow, settings, preparations. Get those in order and you will have a much more comfortable workflow going forward. So uh, so now we're looking at our composition. And always when you're starting out a new composition, you will see a big black gold box. And this is actually not like, this is not a solid black background that's been inserted. This is just what an empty composition looks like. So, yes. To be, to be fair, there's nothing really here at the moment. This could this could equally be a transparent, empty black void of nothingness. But it looks like it's a black box, but it's not because that's that's that would be a solid, and we have not yet created any solid. So, but you could easily be fooled by the way it looks here. Yes, that, that's a very common question we get. Uh, where is the solid? Uh, is this a shape? How can I deal with yep. this? Uh, but let, let me show you a quick tip, Matt. So so actually, uh, if you go down here, and now there's a lot of controls here, so so don't worry, but but we're going to go through yep. them all, of course, and, and have in-depth videos on all of these controls. But I think this button here could, could easily, easily solve this problem for a lot of guys. So if I actually press this little, it's like a little... Um, Let's say a little shaker piece symbol, like a chess symbol. I think, I think it looks like like a bit piece of furniture. Am I right? As a, a bit of a sure. tablecloth, like a carp I'm, like a carpet per se. Maybe. I, I think I, that, that's a, that's to me where I'm sitting. It, it's a it's a tablecloth for a little kitchen table or something like that. So that will be a good description for the, okay, the so viewers. I think. Sure, a kitchen table. So so if I and it says here the, 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 it says toggle transparency grid. Yeah, right. So that, that's the. That's a name for that button. Before we actually press this, let me tell you what transparency is. So transparency is basically when you can see straight through something. So 
if you could think about maybe a kitchen window, you know, you're sitting in the kitchen, you're looking yep. out at the birds. Looking straight out the window. And the capuchin gnagel, and you see the sky outside. And that is because the window is in fact transparent. So... Yes. So it's it's not blocking the light in any way. No, uh, it's it's not filled with any with any density high materials. It's just glass windows that you're looking straight through. That's correct. Uh, and it's not a, it's not a mirror because mirrors sort of reflect the light that comes from one way and you know bounces them back into the other way, right? So a window would be transparency. And 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 the funny thing is that transparency is a thing that's widely used in the Adobe community and the Adobe uh, the Adobe software bundle. So if you're uh, like me, if you dabble around with Adobe Photoshop, uh, you will find the transparency is a word that you see on a lot of the boxes around in the Adobe uh, Adobe Photoshop. So so but here we are in, in After Effects and we're looking at the transparency grid button. So let's dive right into it. <laughs> So, what happens when we're clicking the transparency grid button here? Okay, Christian? so we're gonna, what, we're gonna what, 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 are we, what are we looking at here? We're gonna press this. So, if we actually press the toggle transparency grid, oh yeah, did you see that, Matt? Look at that! Look at that! Yeah. So now we're looking at some sort of some sort of miniature, but uh, at the same time vast chessboard yes. with a lot of. Or <laughs> this might uh, this yes. might actually be my kind of you know what i'm looking at here is essentially a big old tablecloth in black and white <laughs> yes and i would say chess so we are in disagreement sure. I mean, there, chess tablecloth <laughs> we have a we have a tomato tomato situation here uh, christian or, or yes. we could also say we have a adobe a babobi sort of situation <laughs> oh, Matt. yeah oh uh, yes but okay so what are we seeing here we're seeing a grid a, a kind of a, a, a tablecloth grid if you yeah, will for a more technical term sure a grid and yeah. for those who are watching this a grid would be uh, basically a pattern of uh, of likely shaped uh, uh, symbols uh, aligned in a so some sort of grid so yeah. this is a grid we're looking at right now with white and gray uh, squares because they're equally sided Yes. So this is this is a grid with small squares. I would say about three pixels each sure. of the squares. So, and so, I uh, can actually, uh, I'm gonna show you here something now. And uh, if I actually use the scroll wheel on my mouse, I'm actually gonna be able to zoom in. So let me show you uh, how it looks like when I zoom in. Do you see that? Yeah. Look at that. So so the grid is actually not changing. No. At all. The, the sizes of the pixels are the same, but the window. Is the thing that's that changes look at uh, that. Matt, size. Look at that. Uh, yeah, I see. This is this is uh, really connecting to the to the when we're talking about the kitchen window. This is the window in the kitchen that we're looking at now, and it's becoming smaller and bigger by the second. And that is that is you controlling the size. This of is the me window. scrolling scrolling so now the it's mouse really small, wheel, and now it is much bigger. Okay, so we are sitting here with the uh, transparent grid, and I'm gonna say uh, that this is actually a good uh, ending point for this video. So uh, this is gonna be a good starting point to start dragging our shapes in, our text layers, animating these, and getting some really exciting results. Um, guys, make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. There will be a lot more Tudor Bros videos. There are gonna be some Gear Dude videos, and of course some Mad Tech videos coming out soon. So yeah. So this was the part one of the uh, this, the logo effect animation series, and the, the part two will be up on this channel in just a couple of weeks. So stay tuned to to make sure to see that. Yeah. And uh, and make sure you use all the knowledge that we've given you so far, and prepare yourself for the next videos that will become very short. And uh, we can't wait to see what you create out there. Uh, it's it's so exciting to hear from you to get your questions, your feedback, and all the excitement from young people actually creating new exciting stuff. So hopefully we'll hear from you and you have a good uh, good time as we say here. And Matt, thank you for, the, for this uh, episode. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for being here with Tudor Bros. And uh, you're a long time contributor, so thank you as always. And for, for those who, who are watching this, make sure to subscribe uh, as Christian said and, and, and leave your comments below. And uh, we will be back with more videos from Tudor Bros. As usual, stay hungry for knowledge, uh, stay hungry for videos, and uh, continue to be knowledge hunters out there. And we'll see you next time. All right, bye. 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 bye.